Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 12 of the 30 day mean stack Honolulu challenge. Today we're going to take right off from where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we talked about um, the customer's model. So we identified the different types of fields that we'd wanted in the model um, and we used them to, uh, to map um, our fields to our new object for customers that we wanted to create using the, um, the customer's service. Um, what we're going to do today is take these data elements um, and actually map them to a view so that we can uh, put data into the fields that will use all of these elements, um, take that uh, pass that through our customer service, up to the routes, up to our server controller, um, and get Mongoose to use our customer's model uh, and pass that data through to MongoDB. So that's uh, that's the plan for today. So let's, let's figure out where we do that. Well, when we want to create a new customer, we can have a quick look at our routes. So our routes state that if we want to list customers, we go to this view. If we want to create customers, well, this is the... Um, the HTML page that contains the, the predefined data that the Yeoman generator has set up for us. So we'll start with that and we'll customize that to our needs. So um, to find that, we just go down to views. So we're in modules, customers, we go down to views and just uh, open up the create customer. So that's the, the one over here. So that refers to create customer state. So um, opening up create customer, this is what it's looking like at the moment. So if I want to have a quick look at that, when I'm in the routes, I can just grab the URL there, copy that, um, and I'll show you what that looks like at the moment. So we'll put that in. And it looks something like this. And you see there's not um, a whole lot of kind of interesting stuff going on here. It's just got the name field. And we know that we've, we've even changed that to first name now, so we don't have a name data element anymore. But we need to take all the fields that we've added into our controller and map all these two data elements here. Now, whilst we're doing that, I want to go back to our, our design for, for, the, um, for the customers page um, and have a look at how we want this to look. Now, keeping in mind that the wireframes here for our new customer creation, these wireframes are related to a modal window. And um, I will show you how to turn this page into a modal window. Um, but for now, we're just going to create some customers so we can see this data exchange happening and explore the Angular uh, model a little bit more. Okay, so let's let's do it. So we want to create something like this. So when oops, um, when we're looking at this, uh, you might look at it and go, "All right, well, you kind of got two columns, right?" Um, However, if we'd split all these data fields into two columns, what you would find is that Bootstrap prefers uh, all the columns on the left. So it would display the icon, the refer, the channel, the industry first before it displayed the fields on the, on the right hand side. But if you go back to our mobile view, we don't want that to happen on a mobile view. We don't want those fields to display first. We actually want the, the icon of the user, the first name, the surname, the suburb to be our kind of top priority fields. So there's a there's so many different ways to do that, but the way that I'm going to show you how is we're going to we're going to split um, the, this page here into kind of three sections. We're going to split um, the top part here into one row. Uh, we're going to split the second half from refer down to email into a second row, and the industry and the buttons we're going to have into a, in a third row. Now each row is going to have two columns, um, and that's how we're gonna we're gonna sort of structure our page out. So let's let's get to it. So I'll go over to the um, create customer client view. Um, we've got at the top here um, a heading for new customer. Um, we can leave in the column MD12. That's fine. Um, we've got a form that's horizontal. I'll show you what this does to the page um, in a little bit. Um, but what I want to do is just kind of give myself a little bit of space and start plugging in the rows. So I know that I want three rows and each row I want to have two columns. So let's do that. So div class, um, create a row um, and within that row I want a div class of call. We'll make it, um, uh, we'll make it small. So small 
Um, and we've got six, size six is, oops, size six. So we want to go halfway across um, and we want two of those for each of these rows. So it's one, there's our second one, and there's our third one. So now we want to put um, put some, some, some stuff into these these columns that we've set up. Um, for the first one, if I go back to the wireframe, I want um, I want an icon over here. So I'll I'll plug in iClass um, Glyphicon, select that, and Glyphicon user, which we've used a few times, so we're familiar with that. Um, but the other thing that I want to do is I noticed that this is this icon's kind of in the middle of um, of this uh, this column. So I'm going to also uh, just give that a text center kind of feel to it. Moving on to the next one, I'm going to start working on the first name, the surname, the suburb, and the country. Um, now we can just grab the name field that was previously here and plug that in to this section here. Um, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so you can see it. A couple things I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of required. I'm going to get rid of the placeholder um, for now. So what we need to do is just copy this through and just change up the different fields. So just to show you what's going on there, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. So we've got first name, first name. We know that's camel case, so that's first name again. What the data that we put into the data engine model is how we're mapping this input field or this entry um, into or back to um, this uh, th this dot first name that's over here. So we're we're actually mapping this field to our, our form using um, ng model. Um, so we go first name, um, and then we just we just copy this down and and do it again. So. We want three of these, actually we want four of these. Um, so we've got first name, we're going to go surname, surname, oops, surname, surname. Um, then we're going to go with suburb, oops. Suburb, suburb, and suburb, and then lastly we've got country. Oops, that should be the case. Country, country, country. All right. So that now gives me the top part of my view. So let's have a look at that, see what we've got so far. So let's just let's let that refresh. Cool. So we're starting to get somewhere. We know that this um, this icon is really small, but we'll take care of that um, in a little while. So we'll keep moving through. So move on to the next one. So I'll go back and now look at that wireframe. Now there's a there's a few different ways to do this, but when I when I think through um, if I've got a referred in a channel and I've got a phone and an email, now the wireframe here doesn't talk, uh, it doesn't show us um, that level of, of detail, but we would assume that it wouldn't really make sense to a user who's filling out a form to go put in all their kind of um, address related details and then jump across to referred to channel and then back to phone or email. So. Here's a little bit of a conundrum. If you're not familiar with the bootstrap grids, you would find that you'd see referred and channel before phone and email. I'll show you how to kind of work around that a little bit. Um, and one way that I prefer to do that is actually to put the fields in the order that I would want them to appear. So what I'm going to do is put in phone and email um, and I'll show you how to put that in first in the HTML and actually move that across to the right. So I'll just grab, because I want two fields, I'll just grab these two fields here, plug them in here, 
and then change them up. So we want phone oops, phone 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 and then we drop down to email 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 and email now you could you could call the ID for the input um, something completely different it doesn't have to do with um, the the data model um, all it should do is that ID on the input um, and the four on the on the label just should match just so that formatting kind of knows that they're related um, okay that's cool and um, then the next bit we want to do is the refer the channel and the industry. Now I did say that um, we want to make sure that even though we're putting the phone and email um, first in, in the order of um, the, the HTML, we actually want it to appear on the right. And the easiest way to do that is just to push it to the right. So when, um, when we've got a small um, device or anything larger than that, we want to push this section um, by six. So we want to push it to the right. Um, and similarly, for the next section, I'm going to pull it back to the right, uh, to the left. So I'm going to push that section to the right, push, pull this section to the, to the left. Okay, so again, we, we have sort of two sets of data fields that we want to include here. So we grab this. Um, so this time we have um, a checkbox that we want to include for referred. So I'll just scroll across so you can see that. Um, so we want referred, 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 and referred. Um, but this time the the type that we use um, instead of using text, we're going to use checkbox like um, like that and keep moving down to the next one so once we've done that we'll go to channel channel and channel now for the final row, we're going to include the industry field and our buttons. Um, so we can just again copy from above, paste that in here. Instead of channel this time, we'll change that to industry. So that's industry. Just got to make sure that the NG models all align back to the same labels that you're using um, in the controller. Oops, there we go. And industry. And lastly, we're going to include our, um, our lovely little submit button in this little section over here. Now, a couple of things I'm going to do to the button um, firstly, I'm going to make it really big because I can see that it's quite large over there. So, um, so the button, we're going to go button large. The other thing I noticed is that there's an input type here, but I don't really want that to be an input. I'd rather refer to it as a button um, and then I can actually change up the label on the button. So we want save and close um, is what we have there. And we've also got it as a green button, so we can get rid of default and change that to um, to success. Okay, so let's uh, let's have another look at our handiwork. Okay, so a couple of issues with how we've got our referred and channel. So I just want to jump up and have a quick look at that. Uh, okay, I have accidentally um, put this in um, twice. I must have copied it over in incorrectly. So. I um I don't I just need to get rid of one of these so I can just get rid of this second one here and just make sure um, and then indent that back 
Okay, that's better. All right, cool. So that's um, that's kind of a look what I've got. Now I did say to you before that I would show you what having this form horizontal class on the form actually does. And sometimes it can be a little bit annoying when you've got um, two columns that you want to use in a form. The form horizontal actually makes sure that you go all the way across um, the column that the, the width of the column um, that you've given it space to occupy. So you see that we've got these two um, inputs that have actually run right into each other. If we get rid of that form horizontal, uh, we can actually um, give give these uh, inputs a little bit of space. All right, cool. That's where I'm going to leave it here today. Tomorrow we're going to pick it up again and um, and start to style out uh, and fix up some of the formatting that we've got going on for this page. So please subscribe to the channel um, and check out wassable.com for more details. See you tomorrow.